Can partner betrayal trauma cause brain damage? I need to kind of back up a bit before I go into the answer of that. First, explain what partner betrayal trauma is. That's when your, your spouse or your partner, long-term partner, has cheated on you, or you found out they're looking at pornography and you feel betrayed, you feel damaged. Our research, we wrote a whole book on the trauma called Partner Betrayal Trauma. That book is riddled with statistics. I just gleaned through the chapter on PTSD and reminded myself that almost every symptom of PTSD by the women that we assess, about 140 women, had 80 to 90% of each symptom. We're talking about distressed thoughts. Even up to a year, most of them were still having those intrusive thoughts about what happened. Uh, many of them were still having dreams, intrusive dreams about his, or his betrayal. Or if you're a man, her betrayal, because men get betrayed as well. And also uh, the depression symptoms, the, the low energy, the not being able to concentrate, being in a funk. Uh, the social symptoms of pulling away, isolating, the general feeling of not being yourself, like, you're, like something's off. And I know that feeling. Let me tell you a story that doesn't relate to part of child trauma, but relates to trauma and the brain. And then I'm going to work my way back to answering the question. But for those of you who need the answer, yes, it does affect the brain significantly, but I need to explain why, especially if you're a woman, because women get impacted by trauma three times greater than men. Now, let me tell you my story. I'll come back to why it's three times greater, and then we'll get into what maybe you can do to help yourself, because there's several options uh, that might be helpful for you. So about a year ago, I live in Colorado, in Colorado Springs, and uh, that's where Heart Heart Counseling Center is. And if you need counseling, definitely call the number uh, on the screen there and get that. But uh, in Colorado Springs, we get this thing called snow. And I live on this thing called a mountain. And those two combinations sometimes don't work really well together. Well, I was uh, in a really almost like a blizzard, and I was going around the, the mountain, and uh, the Jeep I had at that point slid into a truck that was coming the other way and totaled both of our vehicles. The airbag was deployed. Uh, fortunately, and this is like five o'clock in the morning, I wasn't hurt physically. I got out of the car. I mean, I just came from the gym. I could move around. I wasn't sore anywhere. I didn't, you know, you know, wasn't, my neck didn't hurt. No physical symptoms whatsoever. But as the days went by, even just a couple of days, I was like, I'm not myself. I'm off, like, and I'm really sensitive to the brain because I, I utilize the neuromodulation uh, service that we have in our building here at Heart Heart Counseling Center. And I've done it several times over many years and it sharpens my brain. And so I know when my brain is off and I'm like, I'm not me. And I thought, well, maybe it's just a couple of days. Maybe it's a slight concussion. You know, you'll get over it, Doug, be a man. And so about a week and a half later, I talked to the tech, Jubal, uh, who does the neuromodulation in, in the office. I said, I need you to just scan my brain real quick and just tell me if I'm okay because I don't feel okay. I mean, I'm physically great. I'm in great shape. I'm, you know, all that, but I'm not myself. And he said, fine. We made him a little appointment, got in there. And he's like, wow, your brain has never looked like this. Your brain is all the way to one side. It's never been that way. This is the worst your brain has ever been because usually my brain after a session, just lines right up in the middle, right and left work great together, all that kind of stuff. I'm, you know, my brain is actually really fit. But not now. Now I look the same, talk the same, walk the same. So nobody knew that my brain was off. That's kind of what happens when you get betrayed. You still can go to the gym, go grocery shopping, take care of the kids. You're functioning, but you are not yourself. Your concentration's limited. You're, you can be easily frustrated. You can be triggered. You can be shut down. You can not want to do things with people. Like, I, like, I just don't want to be around people. You can definitely avoid anything that relates to the topic of betrayal, like movies or conversations that people might be having, or even news stories about famous people betraying each other. You want to kind of shy away from all that stuff. You're like, you're pulling away and you're not yourself. And if you're a woman, it's even worse. And let's just have that conversation briefly. I was talking uh, to a real brain expert who's been studying the brain for decades. And he was explaining the studies that have been done on PTSD on military people, men and women. 
because military people suffer PTSD, huge amounts of numbers. And so they're easy to study because there's lots of them. And what's interesting is the difference between male and female. And he told me uh, that women suffer PTSD at a three times greater rate uh, or, or intensity than men. So what happens is they experience more symptoms. Now, why is that? See, you actually, women, you actually have, you know, according to science, a better functioning brain in some ways. You can multitask. You, your brain goes back and forth a lot. The center of your brain is slightly thicker than a man's. That is wonderful when it's functioning healthy, but when it's damaged, you get fried three times greater than men do. And so you could literally not be yourself in a very short period of time once you found out that you've been betrayed, you've been lied to by the man who promised you to, to always be faithful to you, or your partner who you have a commitment to a monogamous relationship, and now your whole life is different. You know, just, just yesterday, I was doing an intensive with a, a client and she found out her whole life was different when they did the polygraph test and verified what he was actually doing. And if you do intensive at Heart-to-Heart Counseling Center, you can do a polygraph. You can do psychological testing. You can actually find out a lot more than just going to a local counselor and talking about the pain. And here we understand part of betrayal trauma. I founded that and coined that term and trademarked that term because I've really been working with women for almost 40 years who've experienced this kind of trauma.